Am I the jerk for abruptly leaving Father's Day lunch? I, a 20-year-old female, was at lunch for an early Father's Day. My dad's girlfriend and my grandparents were already there. When we arrived, my dad sat in front of me and beside his girlfriend who had seated herself in the middle of the table. She then told my dad to sit on the other side of her so he could be in front of his dad. Consequently, I couldn't really talk to my dad at the Father's Day lunch I had planned, but I moved on. After we ordered our food, I heard my dad's girlfriend asking everyone if they were free next Saturday except me. My dad's girlfriend has a habit of making family plans without me using the excuse that I'm at college. I asked what was happening. She said that my dad was having a yard sale to finally get rid of all the clutter in the garage and attic. Most of this clutter is either my or my mom's stuff. When I was around 12 years old my mom redid my room, and a lot of my toys, books, including yearbooks, and pictures never made it back to my room. My mom also moved everything from her parents' house when they passed away. I said, oh, I would like to go through everything. Give me a month. I can call off work for a few days and come down to make sure nothing sentimental gets sold. This is when a back and forth started with my sister and my dad's girlfriend, who said things like I obviously don't need the stuff since I left it. They said I could go through it today if I wanted, but if not, it was getting sold. They said I shouldn't hang on to stuff like that, repeating that I had today to get it. If not, it was too late. They implied I was holding my dad back from renting out the house. After all the back and forth with my dad completely oblivious, because he was all the way at the end of the table, I started tearing up thinking about how I couldn't do this by myself in one day. I also thought about how I didn't have room for this stuff in my college apartment. My sister said, oh my god, calm down, so I left before the food came. I had a lot of therapy after my mom died, but feeling excluded and like a bother just made me break down. I went and sat in the car because I was hyperventilating, which I never do, and I was embarrassed. My dad came out to tell me he wasn't even going to go through with the yard sale. He asked me to come back, but I just couldn't stop crying and still can't at how they were both kind of ganging up on me, or at least that's how I felt. When lunch was over my dad came out and he left, but my sister is at his girlfriend's house right now, no doubt talking about me. I'm embarrassed for causing a scene by leaving, no yelling or anything just left when the tears started, but I feel justified in that I am a member of this family too. I wanted to be at the yard sale, I just needed a month in advance to get off work. Am I the problem? I think you are not in the wrong here. It's completely thoughtless of these people to not allow some reasonable time to look through the stuff, decide what to keep, and find a place for it. Your dad's girlfriend has no business selling off your belongings or anything connected to your mother. Dad needs to step up and put a stop to that behavior. Am I the jerk for crying and not wanting to go on a family vacation? I've never posted on here, but I am in a difficult situation and I do not know what to do. I am an 18-year-old female and I live with my mother, who is 46, my stepfather, who is 67, my autistic half-brother, who is 16, and my half-sister, who is 12, my father, who is 49, and my stepmother live further away, so I rarely see them because I do not have my driver's license yet. I am my father's only child and at my mother's, I am the oldest. I have been raised by my mother to be quiet, listen and never backtalk, which is why it is very hard for me to do anything other than that now. A while ago my mother started talking about a mandatory family vacation for the summer, but I really do not want to go. Every time we go on a family vacation, it ends up badly because they always fight, and my stepfather is borderline abusive. He always directs his anger at my brother. My sister is the typical youngest who cannot ever do anything wrong, so my brother gets the blame. Then he yells back at my stepfather, my mother is in a bad mood, and my sister is being entitled. My brother and sister are also always bickering, and even when they are just having honest fun, my stepfather yells at my brother to leave her alone. I am always in between them like a babysitting referee. I have mentioned multiple times that I do not want to go on family vacations anymore, especially this one. Today my mother called me to her because she wanted to start booking so I sat next to her. At a certain moment, I just started crying. When she looked at me again, she lost it. She sarcastically said, well, I see how excited you are, and then went on and on about how you know what, it's my fault, I should have known my oldest doesn't like her family anymore. I have not liked them for a long time by the way. She then said, you know what, stay at home, go to your dad's, I do not give a shit, do what you want. I would rather go on vacation without a mood killer anyways. I tried to explain my point as calmly as I could between tears, but she just left for work. I hope she was serious about me not having to go, but the risk is that my brother will now also be difficult because I am not going, which could make them stay, and then I will not have rest either way. Am I the asshole for just not wanting to deal with this anymore and standing up, sort of, for what I want? You are not in the wrong here, that was a terrible thing to say to you. Call dad and make arrangements to stay there. It's time to plan for your move out and a happier life. Am I the jerk for always trying to hide my food from my family? I am a 15-year-old female. I always disliked when my family eats my stuff, especially if it's not for the house. Yesterday my father and I went to the grocery store to buy my aunt some ketchup. My father asked me if I wanted anything. Remembering that my band teacher was having an end-of-year party where we could bring in food and drinks to share with other band members, I decided to buy some brownie bites. 
They were small brownies inside a container for a good price. When I returned to my aunt's house, I put them on the counter. My cousin, a 26-year-old female, brings her three children, a 5-year-old male and 3-year-old female twins, to my aunt's house for her mother to watch them. Every time they come over, they immediately eat anything edible in sight. My cousin doesn't seem to care what they eat as long as they eat something. What spites me is when she has them specifically eat my stuff. I remember one time, going to Costco and buying muffins for my own use, specifically blueberry and cornbread muffins. I thought nobody would eat the cornbread. I came downstairs to get a muffin and noticed her children eating them. They also waste food. If you were to give them something as big as the muffins they were eating, they wouldn't finish it and would just waste it, which is what happened. This really angered me as I don't like when people eat my stuff. Traveling back to now, I came downstairs again and noticed that the brownies were halfway full inside the container when it used to be up to the top. So, I put them on the very top shelf of the cabinet to hide them where nobody could reach them, as most people in my family are short. This backfired. My aunt called me downstairs and yelled at me for putting them on the top shelf, even though she didn't buy them, doesn't eat them and doesn't have control over what I do with them. I practically have no choice but to let my stuff be eaten before I can even get a bite myself. I try to explain this to my cousin, but her being arrogant and not caring genuinely pisses me off. I don't want to seem selfish for not wanting people to eat my stuff, but this is genuinely killing me. Am I the asshole? Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk here, but learn from your mistakes and stop making these things accessible to them. Unload the car, carry the bag to your room and stash it under the bed. Put them somewhere they can't or won't get to them. You know they'll eat everything without regard to who it's for, so quit giving them the chance. Am I the jerk for commenting on a sensitive situation for my friend after they were disrespectful towards me and my fiancé? I am a 26-year-old man, and I have been with my fiancé Ashley, a 25-year-old woman, for four years. Our wedding is next month, so we are just finalizing things at this point. I have been friends with my friend group for a while now, some since high school, others since college. We meet up all together usually once a month just to get together and catch up, which generally turns into pretty late nights. One of my closest friends, Alex, a 27-year-old man, was in attendance tonight, which is a rare occasion due to him traveling frequently for work. He and Ashley do not particularly care for one another, but have never had any large altercations until tonight. We were at one of our local beer gardens just hanging out, and Ashley and I were just getting ready to say our goodbyes. We had all had a few drinks in the time that we had been there. We usually stay out with everyone, but Ashley and I have an appointment at the bridal shop at 10 a.m., and with the florist at 11.30, and a few other errands for the day, so we did not want to be out super late. Alex and a few others were going to go to a club after the beer garden, and they invited us out with them, but Ashley politely declined. Alex said, Who asked you? Let the man speak for himself. I then told Alex not to speak to Ashley that way, and that we would not be coming out due to our busy day tomorrow. We started to get our things together and leave, and Alex said, Stop being a pussy. She has had you by the ball since you guys started dating. I am starting to think she is the man in the relationship. After that, I let him have it. His ex-girlfriend, Amy, of three years cheated on him with his brother and his former roommate, and I said, Maybe if you had been the man in your relationship, Amy would not have felt the need to sleep with other men. I am not going to sit here and allow you to speak to my fiancé and me this way. That definitely set him off. He started to berate me for the low blow, and told me that what I said was messed up. A few of our friends also said that what I said was not cool. In the moment, I personally did not care. I just did not appreciate him being so disrespectful towards us. We ended up leaving after the fact. Looking back I feel bad for talking about it because that situation put him in one of his lowest points in life. I have reached out to a few of the more neutral friends, who said we were both wrong but I got too personal. However I do not feel like I did. I care about Alex, but I refuse to allow anyone to speak to myself or my fiancé the way that he did. Am I the asshole? Never feel bad for standing up to a bully. He started it and wouldn't let it drop, so he got what was coming to him. Any friends who side with a bully aren't friends worth having. Why are you even friends with someone who behaves this way? Am I the jerk for addressing an issue with my sibling after our parents' funeral? My dad recently passed. The whole family attended the funeral and the next few days we had to pack up his house. It was my husband, my three siblings, their spouses, and I who did the packing. On the second day of packing I got frustrated and hurt when my sister-in-law, Beth, kept calling my brother Jay by a nickname. My sister and older brother are close in age and they have a close relationship. Jay and I are about 13 years younger than them and had, and still have, a very close bond growing up. I used to call him by a nickname when we were young. Beth was my friend before she and my brother ever became friends or romantically involved. At a certain point in our friendship, when she and Jay became friends, I told her about the nickname I used to call my brother when we were young. She said it was cute, and that she was going to start calling him that. It bothered me when she then did call him by the nickname, but I decided to just leave it. During their engagement and wedding, 
my now husband's relationship with Jay and Beth was not good. After we both got married, the relationship gradually improved. However, every time Beth uses the nickname, I am really hurt by it. The nickname was even one of the answers in their wedding crossword. For me, it has sentimental value, and it feels like she stole it from me. It was something special between me and my brother. As we were packing up my dad's house, I kept hearing Beth call Jay by the nickname. At one point, I took him aside and politely asked him to ask her to stop calling him by the nickname in front of me as it is hurtful. I have asked him previously, but he has ignored the request. He came back and told me this was unreasonable, and he doesn't even remember the nickname. He only knows her ever using it. We had a fight. A few minutes later, Beth asked to speak with me and told me I am being childish. She says she can't remember me telling her about it, and she heard someone else calling their boyfriend by that name, and that's where she got it. I know it's just a nickname, but it feels like she stole it. It was a special memory between me and my brother that is now tainted. I just wanted to address the issue, as it hurts every single time. So, am I the asshole? In my opinion, you have done some things wrong here. If you are complaining that your brother's wife is using a nickname, you consider your name for your brother. You need to get over yourself. Can you be any more petty? Clearly your brother is not as attached to the special memory as you are. Honestly, who does stuff like this after a funeral? Am I the jerk for calling out my family member for their clear favoritism? I, a 20-year-old male, have three younger cousins, a 17-year-old male, a 15-year-old female, and a 12-year-old male. My grandmother, a 76-year-old female, has always claimed she does not have any favorites, but she clearly does. She spoils my 17-year-old male cousin and gets him whatever he wants. When it comes to the rest of us, she barely has much to say. She constantly berates my older brother for some bad decisions he made when he was younger and always puts him down, no matter how much he has turned his life around since then. If my parents make a mistake or forget something when they are shopping, she phones me and spends at least half an hour throwing insults at me, calling me worthless, a waste of space, and saying she wishes I was never born. I have tried blocking her number, but my mother does not like me to do it because then she gets angry calls and voicemails from my grandmother, saying, she is a terrible daughter-in-law who has raised two narcissistic kids that have no control. My younger cousins do not associate much with her because their mother, my aunt, cut contact with her due to some past drama, and they have not spoken to each other in years. Last week, we had a meal out for my older brother's birthday, and he had to invite my grandmother because if we did not, we would never hear the end of it. The meal was going great until she started mentioning how well my cousin is doing, saying she's proud of him and that he is perfect in every way. I rolled my eyes and she saw and started to have a go at me, calling me jealous. That's when I snapped and yelled at her, saying that my cousin isn't perfect at all. He dropped out of school when he was 12 years old. He's always on his Sevis 5 playing Fortnite. He has stolen money from family members and she is clearly enabling him because she never sees that. He is clearly her favorite because she would do anything for him. But when it comes to the rest of us, she wouldn't even lift a finger. She expects us all to run around after her because she acts like she's in charge whenever she sees us. After I said all that, she started to cry and stormed off in a huff. My parents and brother said that she needed that, but my other aunt and cousin posted a rant about me on Facebook, calling me heartless for yelling at an old lady. So am I the asshole for yelling at my grandmother? You are not in the wrong here. Your grandmother has said some unforgivable things, and it's cruel and abusive. She doesn't deserve another minute of your time. Honestly, assuming you don't live with her, going no contact would be the best course of action. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.